The Truth of Girls. Hi everyone, Truth, Truth of Girls Sonia here. So this video is a follow-up to my last one. The last one I said, guys, maybe you don't want to listen to this. It's going to be girl talk. But this one is not going to be just for the ladies, although I have you in mind especially because of my last video, a lot of women were telling me they were going through the same thing. So when I posted it, I was like, oh boy, you know, posting this TMI, just giving you guys an update of what's going on with me. And wow, so many other women said they were going through the same thing. So I'm glad I posted it and something really good came out of it. A few things, but one thing was that, you know, people responded in the comments. Some of those comments were really useful, not just for me, but they're gonna be useful to you. You're gonna see, cause I'm gonna share some really good information with you today. So one of my viewers, posted um, a link to a, an online conference, which is called uh, after40summit.com, Hormone Balance After 40. And uh, this is now, well, it's over. Uh, at the time, you could see all the conference videos for free online. I think that now you can still sign up and you can still see them, but you have to pay for them. Uh, but they do list all the people who are presenting. So you can go and check out who the speakers were um, it seems to me they were all really in, well-informed, knowledgeable speakers with very interesting things to say, and I didn't get to watch all of them, but they're all listed here so you can go check out who's there and who's talking about the topics that might be interesting and useful to you, and then go check out what they've already put out, because a lot of them are authors. So I watched a couple of these, and I, I'm just going to share with you my notes from one of them, which I found very, very interesting, was... Um, his name is Kiran Krishnan, a biochemist, I think, and he did a presentation on probiotics. And it was about a, an hour long um, presentation, but I'm gonna just give you some of the, the information that I took down, which is really very, very interesting. And, and how this is relevant uh, to hormones is how your gut flora affects your hormones, your endocrine balance. Uh, I was really quite surprised at some of the things he brought up. Now here's what was really interesting, which I never heard before, that this gut and body ecology of microbes, bacteria, which is called the microbiome, actually regulates hormones. Like it, it has a lot to do with hormonal function, not only with what it makes your endocrine system do, but that the microbiome itself produces and regulates hormones. As in your gut flora can actually produce all these hormones that other parts of your body, like your endocrine system, also produce. Kind of, I had no idea about that. So uh, what he says, most people think the endocrine system is responsible for the hormones, but the microbiome produces all the same hormones and produces even more than the endocrine system. Wow, and that's amazing because, see, now once we're over 40 and we're like, oh, we're going through andropause or we're going through menopause or perimenopause, oh, well, we're screwed now. Our hormones, our hormones are just going to be out of balance. What can we do about it? Turns out that our endocrine system isn't um, the only thing responsible for this. And so the microbiome is something that we can, we can do something about, right? Uh, he says uh, they, yeah, they produce more hormones than the endocrine system and including also uh, these neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, and also the hormones like estrogen, etc. And that your microbiome communicates with your endocrine system. He said that microbes on the skin and body control 99% of our metabolic functions. Our DNA is only 1% of it. So this would mean that if you get a DNA test and it gives you your risks for whatever, that what you're exposed to, like, and what your microbiome is, is has way more to do with what kind of outcome you're gonna have, such as what kind of risk you have for a disease or something, for developing it, than uh, your, your genetics. Environment is a way bigger factor. Okay, so what disrupts this communication leads and leads to imbalance. Number one, antibiotics, disrupts your gut flora. Also fluoride and chlorine in the drinking water. You know, I mean, chlorine kills, it kills pathogens, kills bacteria. So yeah, it's true. Why wouldn't it disrupt your gut flora? 
never thought of that. And we're all drinking chlorinated water like every day of our life since the time we're little. So I could see how this could have an effect. Now here's another one, cleaning products, bleach and antimicrobials. I had heard that these are no good for your immune system if the environment is too sterile, but I, you know, my apartment is far from sterile, but I didn't realize, so I wasn't really worried about it, right? But I didn't really realize exactly how this works. I thought it's like, if it's too clean and you're a little kid and you don't get to develop your immune system, I understand. I didn't realize that just by using these chemicals, you know, you're, as you're exposing yourself to them, they act like kind of antibiotics, like whatever you're exposed to, it's going to get in your body, you, your skin, which is also full of bacteria naturally, and inside you, and it's going to disrupt your microbiome even more. And one that I did not know about was chemicals on things like stain master carpets and couch covers, which I don't have, but just good to be aware of. If you sit on this kind of couch all the time, it's going to actually expose you to these chemicals and disrupt, disrupt your flora. Also, so there are some things that will affect communication between your gut flora and the rest of your system, like your hormonal system, such as xenoestrogens, which are artificial like chemical compounds that act like estrogens, the female hormone, in your body. And he said a couple of these are red number five, the dye, and glyphosate, which is the uh, weed killer that they use on GMO crops. Also phytochemicals like phytoestrogens, such as um, certain, uh, certain plants are like estrogen, estrogenic, and including soy, and personal care products. So if you're, t like parabens are endocrine disruptors because they're like xenoestrogens, so you're putting all these parabens on your skin or in your shampoo or your creams or whatever, you're constantly exposing yourself to endocrine disruptors. And also, in the sunscreens, there are a lot of endocrine disruptors, I just happen to know. So it's better to use natural products instead. So the, the goal here is to in re-increase the diversity of your gut flora and give those other good microbes a chance to, to proliferate and to do what they're supposed to do. Uh, so one way that you can do this, he said, is by shopping at ethnic markets, because you're gonna increase the diversity of the kind of food you're eating, which is gonna feed different parts of your microbiome. Uh, the more diverse your diet, the more you're going to be able to feed the different organisms in your microbiome. If you're always eating the same thing, this is going to nourish some of them and not others. So the more diverse, you know, the more chance you have to be healthy. Okay, so one of the problems you can have if you have bad gut, gut flora is a leaky gut. And if you have this, then toxins from digestion will leak into your blood system and cause disease. So, but what can you do to fix your gut flora? Okay, here's something, probiotics. What about probiotics it, that, it, you know, we figure, well, we just, you know, take antibiotics or get exposed to whatever, but then you can just eat yogurt. Well, apparently not. He says that probiotics, I mean, if you notice, they keep the good ones in the, free, in the fridge. He says that it's because they, they don't survive once they're out of the fridge. So once they get into your body, which is higher temperature than room temperature, they die. So they, they actually don't survive in your gut. They don't repopulate your gut. He says that actually uh, the probiotics that you buy don't work because 90% of them die going through your gut. He says a lot of them that you take in pill form, they don't survive the stomach acid. They don't survive your body environment. So they don't really do what you think they're going to do. But why do people feel better when they take probiotics or things like kombucha or prebiotics? He says it's because it's something to do with the, the, the byproducts that they create. But apparently it's not as simple as just eating yogurt. Uh, what about fermented foods? He says they're not probiotics, but they're substrates that feed the good bacteria. They're like fertilizer for your gut. So the goal here is to have diverse gut flora that does all these functions and, and to have a lot of the healthy bugs and not the bad ones. So what can you do? Take, taking probiotics, apparently it's really just not that simple. Um, fermented foods could be helpful. What else can you do? He says he has a product called Megaspore, which will survive your digestive system and get into your gut and repopulate it with good bacteria. What else can you do? What if you can't afford Megaspore? Another thing was not to overfeed the microbiome, as in not overeating. 
that eating too often or overeating can disrupt your gut ecology and uh, that the solution to this is intermittent fasting and that that will diversify your microbiome because there are some little bacteria in there that uh, will grow when you eat certain foods, right? There are some that will grow when you're not eating. And so when we're, we're eating all the time, we don't give those guys a chance. So I thought that was interesting. So what he says is that uh, time-restricted feeding increases the microbiome, which you can accomplish with some fasting periods of 12 to 16 hours without food. And uh, basically, one easy way to do this is to just skip breakfast. And he says that this improves your microbiome and raises HGH, which is human gr growth hormone, and uh, improves your hormone balance and your metabolism. And also uh, cleans your body through the process called autophagia, and that this can all lead to weight loss. So, I mean, to sum it up, your, your gut flora apparently is very important and it controls your hormone functions more even than your endocrine system. And the thing is to keep a, a healthy balance, which you can't just simply take some probiotics, but you could take his supplement, you could try it, or you can try to rebalance with more fermented foods, more diverse foods and periods of fasting. So, well, this is what I'm going to try to do and uh, hopefully that's going to help. Look, I hope this information was helpful to you and go check out Kiran Krishnan and what he has to say about probiotics. And um, well, thanks for liking and sharing this video and thanks for listening to me and I'll see you next time. Oops.